Rope is a 50-point machine on Hack the Box that involves three binary exploits. There's a format string vulnerability in the box's web server, a shared library on a sudo binary that needs to be replaced, and finally another binary where we have to bypass a stack carnary and use rop to become root. We start with a port scan and see that only ports 22 and 9999 are open. On port 9999 there is a web server running, so we continue by going to the website. There's a login form, however, when clicking on the login, the page just reloads. We use Bob Intruder to fast a web server with different word lists. In this case, the LFI word list by jhedix revealed something interesting. It seems that we can request a passwd file via LFI. By adding another slash to the path, we can even get the directory listing. In the opt directory, we can see a script called run.sh, which starts the custom built web server we are using. We download the binary to have a look at it. By running strings on it, we can see that this is indeed the web server we are looking for. To look for vulnerabilities, we start the web server with GDB and write a short Bufa script. The script will send requests to the target that roughly follow the format of the HTTP request. The parts of the request called sString will be mutated during the fuzzing session. To create somewhat valid requests, we add a callback to URL and code the payload before sending it. We let the fuzzing session run for a while. Meanwhile, we open the binary in Jidra to manually look for vulnerabilities. In the main function, we can see that accept is called, followed by the process function. In process, there's a call to pass request, which we'll look at later, and a call to log access at the end. In log access, we can find the format string vulnerability in line 17, where printf is used without a format string specifier. Param3 is the path of the URL we are requesting, so we can directly control this. Printf expects a string with format string specifiers, followed by a variable amount of parameters. When we have control over the string, like in the current binary, Printf will try to pass the next values on the stack as if it were its own parameters. This can be used to read memory or even to write memory with the percent %n parameter. We continue by confirming the vulnerability. Sending a couple of percent %p's does however not trigger it. The reason for this is that the path will be URL decoded as we can see in Jira. After URL encoding the payload in Bob, we send the request again. This time we can see that the stack addresses are printed inside the server's console output. To exploit this, we start by writing a short pwn toolspace script that will automatically retrieve the correct offset for our format string exploit. The script starts the server, connects, sends the payload and then reads the output from the server's console. We check the security options we have to deal with in the binary and see that the stack is non-executable. However, this does not matter here because we will not use the stack for exploiting the binary. We download the target's libc version because we later want to call system from libc and in addition to defeat ASLR, we get the current memory mapping of the process from Procself maps. Now that we have all the things we need, we have a look at the final exploit. We enter the format string offset and the binary and libc base from the memory map. Using pwn tools, we can skip a lot of the format string details and just tell it where to write which value. In this case, we overwrite the puts entry in the binary's global offset table with the address of the system function in libc. The argument to the overwritten function will be the HTTP method, so we replace it with the command we want to run. In this case, we create the SSH directory in John's home folder and echo a self-generated SSH public key into the authorized keys file. After executing the exploit, we can SSH into the box as John. Unfortunately, there is no user flag inside John's home directory, so there must be more to it. By running sudo-l, we can see that we can execute the read logs binary as the user Raj. We cannot replace the binary, however, one of its libraries can be written to. Using ltrace, we can see that the binary tries to call the printlog function from the library. We can exploit this by creating a minimalistic library that only contains this function. This function then just calls binsh. Since I copied this from my notes, I also tried to set the UID on GID to zero, which is not needed in this instance. We compile the shared object, replace it on the box and get the shell as Raj. Now we can go to Raj's home folder and read the user flag. We check the running processes and see that another binary is running called contact, which is listening locally on port 1337. We copy the binary to our box for further analysis. 
We run the binary and see that it crashes when sending a long payload. The stack smashing message is generated when we overwrite the stack carnary and the carnary check at the end of a function fails. We now open the binary in Jira and can see that receive is called with a size of hex 400 while the buffer we are writing into has only a size of 56, which leads to the overflow. After running the binary again, this time in GDB, we can see that the stack carnary was overwritten with ace and has no longer the value it is supposed to have. Because the binary is forking on every connect, there is an easy way to deal with the stack carnary. The carnary will always be the same on every fork, so we can overwrite it bytewise. We overflow a single byte into the carnary and try all possible byte values until it does not crash. When that happens, we proceed with the next byte and so on until we have the full carnary. You can write a Python script to do this. In this case, I will use a tool I created last year called Robster to not have to write another script. Robster will send cyclic payloads with incrementing lengths until it discovers a crash. We now know that the offset of the carnary override is 56. Then it will brute force the carnary byte by byte. It will also brute force the next values on the stack, the stored base pointer and the return address, applying the same principle. After a moment we have indeed retrieved all of the values we need. We can now let it continue and pop a shell. Afterwards we will have a look at what exactly happened. And after a moment indeed we get a local shell. The tool sends two ROP chains. The first one uses the write system call to write the address of the GOT write entry to file descriptor 4, which is used by the contact binary. This allows us to calculate the base address of libc, effectively defeating ASLR. Then a second ROP chain is sent, which uses the dub2 method to connect file descriptor 4 with standard in, standard out and standard r, and then start binsh via libc system function. The standalone version of the exploit shows this as well. You can find all of the exploits in my blog post I linked in the description. What's left to do now is to forward the port 1337 from the target box to us and run the exploit again. This will take a lot of time because of the brute forcing that is involved, which is kinda slow over the forwarded port. Eventually the brute force and exploit succeeds and we can read the root flag. This should give a rough overview on how to approach the box.